Hello and welcome back to AIBC Summit YouTube channel. Now, one of the 100 jury members for the Enhanced European Innovation Council, Morio Andreotto, joins me on the line. Morio, great to have you on the line today. Thank you, my pleasure. It's great to have you. Now, it's a really interesting role that you have, and I would love to dig in and just represent uh, some of the work that you're doing. So part of your role within the European Commission is actually deciding on the distribution of the budget for innovation. And with the budget being uh, 90 billion euros, what percentage of that is allocated to emerging tech and also blockchain projects? Yes, I am a jury member of the European Innovation Council uh, and uh, the new program that will be Horizon uh, um, Horizon Europe uh, starting in 2021 till 2027 uh, will have a budget of 90 billion. Uh, this money will be concentrated on innovation. So emerging tech uh, will be um, one of the main uh, uh, hot points of, uh, of the project. And I would say that uh, uh, the budget will be entirely allocated on innovation and this distribution uh, will be uh, not really focused on uh, the different sector of innovation, but more on the stage of maturity of the innovation. So there will be um, a chunk of the budget that will be allocated on uh, the university, will be a chunk of the budget uh, that will be allocated on corporation, and a big chunk that will go to startups and uh, small medium enterprises with the program uh, uh, provided by the European Innovation Council that uh, uh, till now was called a European Innovation Council Accelerator Pilot and from 2021 will be just a European Innovation Council Accelerator for helping companies and startups to scale and, uh, and to become a big uh, and uh, to, to bring innovation in, uh, in Europe. And you mentioned that a real hot point is emerging tech. So uh, in your opinion, from 2021 to 2027, if that's the focus, has there been any surprising trends within the emerging tech space that you've noticed from some of the applications maybe that you've seen so far? Well, uh, first the thing that uh, is, is important uh, that I would be to highlight is that the budget is particularly consistent because uh, uh, every company has uh, the opportunity to get up to 17.5 million, of which 2.5 million uh, as a non-repayable, non-refundable grant. Uh, the only thing is to present uh, a business plan with a particularly with a, with a particular template, uh, but uh, is is not difficult to participate, and uh, the 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 opportunity I would say is uh, is is big. Uh, the trend is uh, I would say about uh, the results. Results are particularly interesting because 34% uh, of the companies that received the funding from the European Commission got listed in the past in one of the stock exchanges around, around the world. And the main point here is not about uh, the monetary budget that the European Commission is uh, sharing with, with the winner of the grant, but about uh, the network. Uh, European Commission uh, is uh, opening the network and pushing the project to be successful in the future. And I think this is the real uh, main and critical point of why this, this project is important. Uh, another thing of which we should be proud in Europe is that uh, if you go on Crunchbase and you check uh, who is uh, the most important uh, accelerator and venture capital around the world, uh, you will see that is not uh, uh, a, a US venture capital, but is the European Commission. If you go on Crunchbase and you see who has who, who is at uh, Place number one, you will see there is uh, uh, IASME, that is actually the European Commission. Fantastic. So it sounds like a huge amount of support there from the European Commission. And that's not your, your only role as well. So you're also the founder of EDSX. So I would love to ask you about some of the work that you're doing with EDSX, uh, particularly within the STO market, which is a very interesting talking point at present. And I'd love to get your uh, insights on just how you view the STO market at the moment. Yeah, I think that the STO market started a little bit slow compared with, uh, with the ICO, but uh, this is, I think, uh, uh, natural because uh, uh, STO has to deal with uh, the legislation. So it's something that must be fixed uh, by, by the authority about the legislator around the world. And now it's important to point out that two weeks ago in Switzerland, we have uh, had the new DLT regulation 
So the decentralized ledger technology regulation that I think will uh, will help a lot to start. I really believe in this market. I we have built this platform at the beginning of 2020, and I think that now the legal framework in Switzerland is uh, uh, particularly strong, and it, it really allows to to launch an STO uh, being in compliance with the law. Uh, what we have done uh, during uh, 2020, we have been able uh, to approve the first uh, articles of incorporation completely on the blockchain. So um, this means that uh, from the legal point of view, it's possible here in Switzerland to have uh, the transfer of the ownership of a share between the two parties completely on the blockchain. And this is recognized by law. This is something that in many European countries is, is, is still not possible because uh, you have a public register and every time that you have a, a change in ownership of that share, you need to go uh, with a notary or at least you need to communicate it to the public register. And clearly, if you have a public register and the blockchain together, this is not working because also the blockchain is a register. Now with the, the DLT, uh, this has been uh, completely fixed. Uh, this is uh, recognized by the law, and uh, I think uh, this will help a lot the, uh, the legal framework. EDSX, furthermore, is completely decentralized, and I really believe uh, this is the right way to go with uh, uh, STO and uh, uh, blockchain. Uh, furthermore, uh, I'm, I'm, we are still waiting uh, the, the opening of uh, SDX uh, by the Swiss Stock Exchange that uh, uh, should uh, should happen at the, at the end of uh, 2020. So we should uh, uh, approach uh, this this day. Fantastic. So quite a lot then in the pipeline as well for the rest of 2020 and also moving forward. And just finally, I would love to get your insights on just if you're able to view any potential investment opportunities. We have a lot of our viewers that are watching that are maybe in the investment space. They are looking to see what the emerging trends are at the moment. And based on what we see on EDS Exchange, is there any traffic that you're able to identify that is looking in any particular areas or regions? Or is there something that you're seeing which which is more of an upcoming investment opportunity, in your opinion, at present? Well, ADSX is still a young platform. So right now, we just have one project that is uh, open to the public in the primary phase. Uh, we have uh, two, two areas of the market, the primary market and the secondary market. Uh, I think that right now, ADSX is one of the few platforms that is really able to offer a secondary market on a security token, but is still not open, not because uh, uh, we are not ready, but because uh, projects are still have still not completed the primary phase. Um, we have uh, three projects right now on the platform. One is Over Future, is a particular interesting one because it's a company that. Uh, uh, started three years ago and now is a company with the revenues between uh, 1 and 1.5 million and an EBITDA between uh, 20 and 30 percent. Um, it's a company that has uh, contracts uh, with multinational like uh, Unilever, ABB, UFI Filter and many others. Uh, they, they are active in the IoT space and they also have a blockchain platform. Um, so this is a particularly interesting project where we have uh, had also the interest of uh, uh, some venture capital family office uh, here in Switzerland. Uh, I think another hot topic now in STO is about real estate. Uh, we have uh, uh, two important projects, uh, one from uh, one of the main uh, uh, real estate developer in Italy and another one uh, uh, that is called Equestrella, like that uh, should be the tokenization of uh, Six Senses uh, Resort in Brazil. Uh, we have another project uh, that is uh, interesting from uh, a big Italian group uh, in, uh, active in, in mining in Georgia, uh, mining of the Bitcoin. And uh, the last one is a UK investment company. Uh, the name is Prime Nordic. It's, uh, uh, they have just deposited a uh, prospectus in Malta. We are waiting the final authorization from Malta is a uh, digital bond. Uh, and these are the projects that we have, but I think uh, uh, many more will uh, will come in the next uh, in the next months. 
Fantastic. Well, Maura, thank you so much for joining me on the line. It was really, really interesting to hear some of the work that you're doing and also some of the work we're seeing from the European Commission as well. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much, Jessica. Thank you. Well, that's all from us here on AIBC Summit YouTube channel. We'd love to hear how you found this segment. So share your thoughts in the comments below.